Uh, hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips. And yes, it's not a CB radio, which can only mean one thing. Again, we are here with Mr. Vintage Electronics hello. Repair. Hello, Andy. Hello, Graham. It's nice to see you again. And you too again, pal. It'd be even nicer to see your wallet. <laughs> see the fibre of my fabric. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. the one. Well, um, if you're not familiar with Andy's channel, please go and check it out. I'll put a link in the description below. It does all vintage stuff, valve stuff, even crap strads that are in the corner. Yeah, we've got and some. All sorts of bits and pieces. We've got some radios here that we're working on. So some really old, old radio old radios, gear. Record players. Re record players, even down to some. Bigger, more professional, beefy stuff there. But anyway, yeah, thanks for having me, Andy. And what 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 delicacies have you got for me today? Right, well, I've got I've got I've got I've got this for you. This is a now. Don't be getting a stalker on when you see this. Don't worry. This is a I'll stalker, try not to. This is a stalker nine. I think is it? Yeah, a stalker nine. It's, it's an st it's an st nine fdx. Uh, it's one of the rare ones. This has got FM on it. The UK one to forty on it. Mm -hmm. Or at least it did have when it was working. And it may have when it's still when you get it working, uh, but that's what we've got for you. Smashing. We've got a knob missing. Uh, we always like a knob missing. Well, we don't actually, but pretty sure one of them will show up somewhere. Yeah. Uh, one for that. Front's in nice condition, apart from a scuff on the side here. Looks like it's got a few war wounds. It's got a few. Someone's drilled a hole in the back. Someone's nicked. The extension speaker socket and put a big rubber, rubber grommet in there. Or the PA socket, rather. Uh, there's, a, there's a piece of silver paper. There's a piece of paper in here. Oh, cover, covering up a mess that somebody's put in. It's got some war wounds, that, hasn't it? It has, hasn't it? Well, I'm going to show you the inside before you buy it. Because I really think you need to see it. I adjusted this here, which I, which I assume is the VCL. Yeah. And when I, when I adjusted that... It picked it, that radio there picked it up. Is it that one there as well? I didn't play with that. I presume that's the FM board. UK FM because... No, no, that might be your... Because I've seen them without that in. It could be with a coil on it. Yeah, I've seen them without that in and they've only got the AM SSB. Apart from that, it looks it looks complete. It does, apart from somebody's had the, what do you call it? What? The power meter adjuster. Ah, the power. That's what that'd be that hole on the back that'll put a variable power on it. So here we have. No. Beautiful. Beautiful. And it's working. And it does work. And it's working. It was a fiver. A fiver, my god. A fiver, you know. <laughs> Everything all works. Don't need no idlers in it or anything. No, all the idlers were good. Yeah. Uh, the only thing that was bad was the loading belt. Where's your, where's your lock? Uh, the, it's not adjustable on it's this. Not adjustable on that. No, one. it was on the early one with the big keys on yeah, it though. All the metal mickeys. Yeah, yeah, the deluxe one it was. Yeah, because you had a. You had to still track it. Yeah, you had the lock, didn't you? Yeah, you could lock it. Yeah. Oh, it does move, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and I didn't think it did on these. So, yeah, worked on many of these in the past. So did I, mate. So these are the bundles of joy that I have priced from Mr. Vintage Electronics Repair. So this stalker is definitely going to be a, a mission to get working. I've got the AM set because, yeah, you know, it's all... Because you're partial to an AM set. I'm partial to an AM set. But um, yes, Mr. Stalker is definitely going to be definitely a challenge to get that thing looking half decent again. But we can try. We can try. It's worth a go, isn't it? It is. So, um, as always, thank I'll you, be... Andy. Oh, you're welcome. For, um, for, for having me over. Oh, you're welcome. I've not had you over. I'll give you a good deal. You have. <laughs> You have. I've nailed his hat on. Nailed my hat on, that's the one. So, so yeah, um, don't forget to check out Andy's channel if you like all that type of stuff. Vintage stuff, you know. And valves and shit. Yeah, there's all sorts of stuff here. If you want any repairs doing any vintage stuff, let me mm -hmm. know. Uh, I'm always, always happy to help, I don't mind. So we're back home again. Thanks, Andy, for having me over. And here's our Stalker 9 FDX. 
in a really, really bad condition. So let's see what surprises await us inside this radio. Let's see whether we can't get it to work somehow again. So somebody's cut a nice big hole in the side of the case. That's going to be a bit of a pain to sort out. So let's have a look inside. So immediately it looks complete. We've got what looks like a variable power modification to the front. Which is fine. But we're going to be removing that and putting it back to standard. But everything else looks okay in here. Well, as good as it can be. Bit of a broken pot at the back there. But that might still work, who knows. You guy people there will have noticed there's a hole in the board as well. Still got our MB8719 PLL chip in there. So we're just trying to decipher what's been done to this radio. Now, the scary part is, is what's underneath this. We have some additions in there. So I think the plan for this radio is take out anything that's doesn't look standard and then try and get it to work bit by bit basically so you guy people out there will have noticed there was a knob missing and a quick call out on the Facebook group that got us a nice person that was kind enough to send me a replacement knob so we got a full complement of knobs and as I was taking the front off I noticed this come away and underneath is the original non-stealth um, graphic so we're going to be keeping that there I never realised that that's actually pulled off the front so let's give it a clean up See how it looks after a bit of a clean. I know we've got some chrome work missing on the side, and that's going to be practically impossible to fix, but we'll cover it up the best we can. Try and make it look as best as we can. Because I don't think I'm going to be able to find a replacement front for this very easy. Or find a replacement front that looks in a half decent condition. But it's turned out okay. Just that mark on the side. It's going to cause us some issues. And this has popped out as well so this needs to be glued back in. We've actually gone over that with a bit of poly watch to get rid of the scratches. So let's have a look, see whether we can find out where this radio is. Find out where it's working, basically. So we've got the tiny SA on. I'm trying to find out where it's transmitting. And it is actually transmitting, but it's not doing much seems to be stuck on one frequency channel change does nothing so what what is that peak there let's move the marker across see what frequency it says it is it's actually a second harmonic that one or should we say first harmonic? You can actually see the second one there. 
So it's transmitting on 25 megahertz. Interesting. So yeah, move it along, you can see the harmonics, that's fine. So it is actually doing something, it's just not doing a lot of where it should be doing something. So why, why is this? So we've found a cut track. And some other strangeness going on. So I think we're going to have to pull all that lot off. And looking at the back of the channel change and the board with the binary adders on it, we start to see some diodes on there. So I think that is going to have to be pulled out. So we're just checking the supply to the PLL and the inputs to it. So we have got some sort of binary input going on, but nothing changing on the PLL, um, on the frequency transmitted on the output. So who knows why. So the channel change is doing something. Whether it's doing anything right with all those diodes on the back, who knows. We'll have to get the... Um, truth table for the MB8719 and cross-reference it to find that out. So I think this is going to have to come out, whatever this is. I think we're just going to have to take out pieces that don't look like they should be there. So we've remade these tracks. Little did I know I should have pulled that tantalum out as well. And having a look at the back of the channel change, we can see cut tracks, diodes, bridge wires. So what do I do? I've no idea what this modification is. I've no idea how to enable it or do anything with it. I presume that brown wire does something. Maybe I should have left it in. Who knows? But with this being unknown, I've got to try and take it back to standard. And work from there. So I've cleaned the board up. And as you can see, there's plenty of cut traces. So we'll remake those traces with some thin wire. As such, so yeah, a bit of a fiddly job, but we've done that. And we've got a pin there on the binary adder that was cut that I didn't notice. Thanks, Chris, for pointing that one out for me. So now we have a transmit. So we have transmit. We have transmission. But it's not transmitting where I wanted it to transmit. And this will lead us into the next set of problems. As you can see, the signal meter is stuck. So we'll just slacken off this screw. That will free our signal meter up. There we go. That's all it needs. Little turn. Jobs are good. Yep, perfect. It's got to adjust the trimmer inside and that'll be fine. So it's transmitting and receiving. but it's not transmitting and receiving where we wanted it to be. And we actually found out that somebody's 
change the main mixer crystal. So basically mid band is now low band and high band is now mid band. So now we've got no high band on it. So maybe those diodes were to shift it onto high band. I don't know, it's too late, they've gone. But anyway, stay tuned for part two where our struggle continues with this radio and how to fix this crystal problem. Because believe me, the crystals are not easy to get hold of. But anyway, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join the Facebook group, join my website. Stay tuned for part two. And thanks for watching.